Hello, and welcome to my Bayonetta speedrunning skips tutorial. These skips are for the any% percent new game normal, no infinite fluke glitch speedrun. During the video, I'm going to be explaining how I perform the skips in the speedrun to hopefully give a basic and simple explanation on how they are done. The last tutorial for these skips was made just over two years ago, and one skip in particular was found as of that date, so I'm going to be mentioning that one in this video as well. In the description of this video though, I will be linking that video as it is still a good resource and one that I had initially learnt from. If something within this video doesn't make sense, feel free to leave a comment so I can explain it better. During each skip, I will have my gamepad viewer on the screen, so I hope it can be useful. I hope you enjoy the video. The first notable skip of the speedrun is in Chapter 2, Vigrid City of Deja Vu. After completing the fight which is down here, which will be two angels, the game will want you to do damage to this wall for it to create a pathway for you to get across. However, to get across that pathway that the game forms, you need witch time. And the game will want you to interact with those two statues behind here to get witch time, then run back so you can get across. However, in the speedrun, that is unnecessary. Before this chapter, in the first chapter, chapter 1, you get this technique. You buy this technique, which is called air dodge, which allows you essentially to dodge through the air. Pretty self-explanatory, and this skip is fairly easy to perform. So what we do is, is instead of interacting with that wall, we jump, dodge, jump, dodge, dodge. And that allows you to get across here, like so. So now we're in chapter 3. I'm not entirely sure if you would call this a skip, but at this point in the chapter there is the door that breaks open and lava comes from the floor. It's not necessary to interact with the statues for witch time, instead you can use the yellow moon lollipop which gives you invincibility and allows you to go through here. Now coming up next is a bit of movement, which I guess you would call a skip, I think. And what we essentially do is instead of having to go up the side of the wall to the left you might notice there's like a little platform that usually you go up but instead in the speed run for this category we do this we jump through the air using the air dodge technique that I talked about before and you can make it across here without having to go across the buildings up the top Okay, so this is the underground skip in chapter 3. You might notice in front of me there is a bridge. To progress, the game wants you to go across that bridge to make it to the other side. Or to go through this portal. Because there is an animation where the bridge breaks and you have to go through this portal to then go across the bridge. However, in the speedrun, that is not necessary. Using the two techniques that you buy at the store before this chapter, which is the afterburner kick technique, as well as the stiletto technique, it is possible to make it across to a platform over there. You might be able to see it vaguely through the through the lava. Um, it's possible to get over there without having to go across the bridge. Now, to perform this, what I do is I firstly try and line up Bayonetta's head with the stones that are there. The stones that are here, this wall. Other runners line it up in other ways. Some runners do it from the left. This is just the way that currently I am performing this skip when I do runs. And after lining it up, I go forward, do an afterburner kick near the edge, and then stiletto movement through the air. You also perform a second afterburner kick when you get a little bit closer. To gain enough height to land on top of here. By doing so you can skip the whole bridge part. You might wonder, because there is a second platform down below, if you can land on there instead. If for example you were too low for whatever reason. 
and you can't, unfortunately. It's a part of the death plane, and it will send you back here. So to perform this, I line it up, walk forward, afterburner kick near the edge, and then stiletto movement. And I want to just constantly be pressing the punch button, just to keep going forward without, yeah, falling down. Something else I take note of during this skip is you might notice the camera zooms out when you get close to the that structure. I take a note of that as to when to time the after the second afterburner kick. So I'll do it again. Also another thing that I take note of is something about Bayonetta is that whenever she is near an edge, she gets locked in and only goes over the edge if she's jumping. Like, she can't run off the edge. And the reason why I take note of this, at least for this skip, is because when she hits the edge, her body will slightly move. And when you're lining this skip up, or at least for me, I want to make sure that she's going the direction that I want her to go and not slightly off. So, I always do my afterburner kicks slightly off the edge, so she's going the direction I want her to go, and not a slightly different direction when she's pressed up against the invisible wall. That's there. So I do this again, I line it up, walk forward, do an afterburner kick slightly in front of, off the edge, and then slow movement through the air. When I see the camera zoom out, I do four stiletto movements. One, two, three, four. And you can get it on top like that. That's how I perform this skip. In Chapter 5, The Lost Holy Grounds, there is a skip where you can skip having to go around the snake way and can make it up top. So, what we do here is we do three afterburner kicks up the wall. And then I do a stiletto movement just to make it on top of here. I'll do that again. Because you get an extra jump when you latch onto the wall. So, you do two. You do two afterburner kicks. Then a third one, and if you are a little bit short, I like to do stiletto movement just to get up. I usually position this just slightly next to the waterfall, to the left. And then make it up that way. That's how I do this skip. So this is Chapter 6, The Gates of Paradise. After the previous chapter, there are several techniques that you get. One of them is Panther Within, which is one that you receive normally when progressing the game after you defeat Jean in the previous chapter. The second one that we have, which is one that you purchase from the store before you go into this chapter, is Crow Within, which allows Bayonetta to go into this crow form and to fly in the air. What happens here, usually when you play casually, is you interact with this statue and an inspired fight will come out from below here. After you defeat the inspireds, some water platforms will emerge for you to make it on top of there. We have a skip here that allows us to get up on top of there without having to verse the inspireds. Now, what we do is, is I'll show it first, is we run in panther form, do two afterburner kicks, go into crow form, and then latch onto a part of that wall which allows Bayonetta to get an extra jump and allows her to do a, another afterburner kick up here. This skip is pretty tricky because you have to latch onto a particular spot. But something to take note of is, yeah, usually Bayonetta only has a two jump limit, but when she grabs onto a wall, she gets an extra jump. 
So, by latching onto that wall, we can perform an extra afterburner kick to gain more height to get on top of there. So we go to the ledge in Panther form, do two afterburner kicks, crew form. Then we have to grab onto that specific spot, which is the cone shaped below. And when you grab onto the wall, it will give Bayonet an extra jump. Something that I do while performing this skip that you'll see on the input viewer is that before I do the final afterburner kick up the wall, I get out of crow form by doing a shot with the X button. So I'm in crow form. I shoot to get out of crow form and then I grab onto the wall and do an afterburner kick. That shot is just to get out of this form. Now, in chapter 8, Route 666 is probably the biggest skip in the whole speedrun. After the joy fight in this chapter, usually you have to do a whole motorbike track to verse this angel which is in a form of a car, Erenik. However, in the speedrun, we have something special. As soon as this segment starts, and Bayonetta is on her motorbike, we go into the menu straight away. Now, when we are in this menu, we use a magic flute. Straight after we use the magic flute, we go into panther form, and as I'm about to show. And we go backwards. Now what this does is you go over the finish line backwards, readjust by hitting the side, and you will go over the finish line again, and the game will think that you did the whole motorbike track. And that skips having to do that. The next two chapters, which are the Paradiso chapters, have quite a few skips. Okay, so in this chapter, you might notice that there is this big sphere, which is in the air. To get on that sphere, usually, you need to trigger this fight by d going here. There's this fight that emerges so that you can put a key into there and get on top via a platform. But in the speedrun, we don't do that. What we do in the speedrun is we go to the back wall. We land on here and what we're going to be doing is we're going to be doing afterburner kicks up this wall to gain enough height get, to get on top of that sphere without having to do that fight. This is a little bit tricky because not only do you have to do afterburner kicks upwards, but you have to do two downwards. So I'll show you. The way that I do afterburner kicks downwards is a little bit different from other runners I've heard. But what I do is, is like I said before, you gain an extra jump when you latch onto a wall. So we do two afterburner kicks upwards, a third one, two downwards, and then you activate crow form. And with that, you should get enough height to get on top of this sphere. If you don't get enough height, this will happen. And the fight will emerge, but we don't want that happening. What we do want is, yeah, enough height. So we two up the wall, another one, two downwards, crow form. I spin the camera around so that I can be going straight ahead to get an on top of here as soon as possible. And see, there is a fight here that you do. And you, it wasn't necessary to do the one that was below. Just this one. Something to take note of about this skip is you don't want to be too far to the left. Because there is an invisible wall here. As you can tell, I can't keep going forward. You don't want to get trapped behind that. So you want to try going more to the right. To get enough height so that you don't have to deal with the invisible wall that's to the left. And you can get up on top of here. Like so. Yeah, like I mentioned before. Um, I do the downwards after burner kicks. For this skip, slightly different from another runner and this is what works for me there's a, probably other ways to do the downwards kicks so it's best to find what is best for you to 
so long as you get the same result, which is to get on top of that sphere, that is what matters the most. But yeah, the hardest part of this skip, at least for me when I was first learning the skip, is the downwards kicks. Because if you don't get the downwards kicks, she can do just that and come down, which is not really what you want. So what I do to get the downwards kicks is you do the first three and I flick, I flick the joystick forward like so. And that's the way that I get the downwards kicks. So you do the first three, she latches on, you get the third one. Then I flick the joystick for the two downwards ones to get the extra height. And that's how I perform this skip. Once you do the fight which is on top of the sphere that you just got on top of, when you collect the key and put it in the keyhole over here, it will spin this sphere around and create a spiral platform for you to go on top of. For you to run up so that you can get on top of here, like this. However, there is a smaller skip here that you can do, and I'll show you how you do it. Because there is gravity with the upper platform, if you go to the right a little bit and then do two afterburner kicks, then activate crow form, the gravity of this platform will take you to it, so you don't have to go up the, the path. Coming up next is the snake way. You might notice it's similar to the one in chapter 5, and there's a spiral. We have a skip for this segment that I'll get to explain. So as soon as this starts, there's going to be a golem who is running behind us, like so. Now, we go in Panther form ASAP, and the invisible wall that is there is not high enough. So using afterburner kicks, you can make it over that wall and make it to the bottom ring. This skip is pretty fast paced to watch, but I'll try and explain it as much as I can. So we'll do it again. And what I take note of here is the place where I do the afterburner kicks is in a line with this waterfall. As soon as I get to about here, I'll do two afterburner kicks upwards to get over this invisible wall that's trying to trap you in here to do the whole spiral way. But because we have afterburner kicks, which is a technique that gives you a lot of height, which you've seen used in quite a few of the skips so far, we are able to get over this invisible wall, activate crow form, and then you can fall to the lowest ring and skip the whole spiral down. There's going to be a lightning bolt, so you usually just get which time. Then here, I go as far as I can, and you can drop to the lowest ring. If you feel a bit uncomfortable doing this, you could also activate crow form a few times just to make sure you land in the correct spot, but that is how you perform this skip. Or how I perform it, I should say. In the next fight, there are a few chests that you open and enemies come out and after you defeat them, you get this key from key parts which were also in the chests as well. Usually you have to put this key in this hole and it creates some platforms to get over there. What we do though is we do two afterburner kicks, throw form, latch onto the wall and then perform another afterburner kick to get on top of here. You might be wondering though, why do we defeat the enemies for the key if we don't actually use the key at all? The reason is because in order to progress forward we need to defeat those enemies because the game creates a wall which you can't go through unless you defeat those enemies. So even though we don't put the key in we still need to do that fight but we can skip having to put that key in and doing a little animation where the platforms come by doing afterburner kicks like that. In Paradiso A Sea of Stars in chapter 10, after you defeat the gracious and glorious enemies there is a skip. Usually you go to the left and there is a bunch of enemies that you fight in order to complete the chapter. However, in the speedrun 
we go forward this way. We go to this ledge. What we are going to be performing here is we are going to be using the afterburner kicks to get up on top of that ledge up there, which is out of bounds. So, like before, we do three afterburner kicks, two downwards, and you should get enough height to get on top of that ledge. You have to go right to the edge of this ledge, and then you should be able to make it to the top. So we do, you latch on, you get a third one, two downwards, you go into crow form to make sure you fly up here, and you get up on top of this platform. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to jump over this fight. So to do so, after you make it up here, you go into panther form, jump twice, go into crow form, and you can fly to the end of the chapter. And you can bypass having to do the whole fight that is here. But it's very important that you get enough height and you go further enough to land here because if you don't the fight will trigger and you will get locked in there and have to perform it again. So this is chapter 12, The Broken Sky. The skip in this chapter is not in the previous tutorial video because at the time this skip was not known. After defeating the angel fights which are here, there is a skip that we perform. Usually you have to go this way to do Jean's fight and to trigger her fight. However, in the speedrun, we go the opposite way. Because this whole plane is an object, you can actually get on top of the plane. To perform this, we go in panther form first, then do two afterburner kicks to the right to get on top of here, which is the wing of the plane. After doing so, we're gonna go to this part and we're gonna get on top of the plane by doing afterburner kicks to the side of the plane. So you do three afterburner kicks to get up on top of here. Now we go along in panther form. Jean is to the left so we're gonna trigger her health bar. Then we fall down here and you want to stand in a specific spot to get her to do a wicked weave so you can get witch time and push her off the plane. By doing so, her health will get erased, like so, and when that happens, you want to go into the fight ASAP. And by doing so, she will drop dead in the fight, because all her health vanished. And that is how you perform that skip. I will explain it now a little bit more in detail. So, what we do, panther form, two afterburner kicks to the right. If you don't have enough height, you can always latch onto the side to then do that. And for this, you don't want to be too far back because Bayonetta can't get up for whatever reason. You need to be a little bit more to the edge so you can get the afterburner kicks up the plane. Now, the thing with this is you don't want to go too far to the left because what will happen is you will get trapped by an invisible wall in Jean's fight, which I'll show you right now. If you go too far, and you try to go out, see I can't run out, so it's important that you only slightly trigger her fight, because otherwise you'll get trapped in here, and this is not what you want. What I do as a way to make sure that I don't go too far is I use this flag pole as sort of a point to how far I should go. I do, I just go out a little bit more than that pole to trigger her health bar and then take a hard right to fall down here. Something to take note of with picking Jean off the plane is that this platform that you stand on is moving towards the, the trigger point. Now, because it's moving, you need to make sure that you are on the right angle to hit her off. Because if you're not on the right angle, you might just hit her towards that way. And we don't want that happening. We want to make sure that we kick her off. I mentioned a little bit briefly before that you need to be in a specific spot when you fall down, after you fall down. And the reason is because if you're in a specific spot 
on that archway looking platform you might see it a little bit down there that we land on if we land on a specific spot or go to a specific spot i should say jean will always do a wicked way for you to get witch time and that is very important this was something i didn't initially know when i started learning this speed run but ever since i learned this it has made this skip so much better for me okay so we do it as we before we trigger her health bar like so we go down and now here i'm going to go to this specific spot because jean will fall down and she will do a wicked weave always so you when you come here you will land about here and you want to go to the edge just like that and she will always do the wicked weave for you to get witch time and then you can hit her off the plane and that makes it a lot better so the two final skips in the speedrun are in the chapter a tower to truth the third final chapter the first one is just a small one so instead of having to go on those two platforms that are there you can do two afterburner kicks to the left and to the right to get on top of this platform the second skip though is a little bit larger and usually for this segment you would interact with the statue uh, not statue you would interact with this contraption like this so that you turn and this happens there are all these plates that emerge so that you can make it to the other side however in the speed run this is not necessary and what we do is we do two afterburner kicks we're going to crow form and we can make it to this plate now after coming to this plate you can go in panther form and then bird form again and you can make it to the fight on this side without having to use that contraption and the fight that's here is a golden and that is the final set of skips thank you for watching this video i hope that i was able to explain things in a way that made sense just as a disclaimer i was not the one who found these skips but they are used in the bayonetta speedruns if you would like to learn more about the bayonetta speedrun feel free to join the bayonetta speedrunning discord which i will have linked in the description of this video this is my first time making a tutorial video and i'm thinking about maybe making some more for bayonetta in the future Take care and good luck.